After a few years of curtailed <laughs> vacations, travel is back, and more people than ever are ready to hit the road to get to where they want to go. Experts predict a smoother travel experience this summer than in 2022, but they also recommend acting now to get that room with a view or rental car if you'll need one. Hello and welcome to Rural America Live with AARP. I'm Christina Loren and we have a very fun show in store for you tonight. As the warmer months move in and we prepare for vacation season tonight, our special guest is travel detective Peter Greenberg, who is fully equipped to share some valuable information for your next trip and you are such a big part of the show. We want to hear from you tonight. We're going to open up our phone lines right now. So give us a call at 877-283-7570. And to kick things off right, our question of the month is, what is your favorite type of vacation and why? Or maybe you have a travel tip to share with us tonight. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call. And if you do call in, you might just be a winner tonight. We're giving away a hard-sided cooler to five random on-air callers. It could be yours. All you have to do is join the conversation at 877-283-7570. As a friendly reminder, you don't need to be over the age of 50 or even a member of AARP to win, but you can only win one time each calendar year. If you are a winner, AARP will call you back in the next few days to confirm your mailing address, so make sure to take their call or return their call if they leave you a message. And now we welcome our familiar friends from AARP. We have some repeat performers coming back, some fan favorites joining us tonight. Friend of the show, AARP State Director from Vermont, Greg Marshallden joins us. And Iowa AARP State Director Brad Anderson is with us once again as well. Welcome back to the show, gentlemen. It's great Good to, to be, be here, here yeah. as always. We're excited and we have another special guest joining us a little bit later on in the show, travel detective. Peter Greenberg will join the conversation to share his inside tips on finding those hidden gems throughout the U.S. And he's also going to let you know how to maximize your next booking. Welcome back. We have so much to cover tonight. Let's just jump right into it with Brad. The show comes at a great time. You both know this new survey came out. AARP does it every year. They just released their annual travel trends survey. What were some of the big reveals, Brad? Well, thanks, Christina. So we do. We do the survey every year. And uh, what it is is a survey, a national survey of the 50 plus population measuring their travel trends. And so some of the things we measure, for example, are what type of travel are you doing? Is it car? Is it domestic? Is it international? Are you flying? Uh, another thing that we measure are what are some concerns that you may have? Uh, and then finally, how much money are you going to spend on travel? So these are the things that we look at. One of the big takeaways of the recent survey is the fact that COVID-19 uh, concerns are now being replaced with concerns about costs and inflation. And this makes a lot of sense because anyone who has tried to purchase eggs, you know, or even an airplane ticket recently, um, their pockets are pinched. And so they, they take those concerns into consideration when considering what travel to make. So. Um, Let's take a look at some of the things we learned from our 2023 survey in addition to what I mentioned. So one of the things we learned is 81% feel it is safe to travel now. So that's a slight increase uh, from last year where it was 77%. 52% say cost is curbing traveling. So that goes to that inflation point that I mentioned. And then 61% are taking trips in the U.S. and most will drive to their destination. Now this is a dramatic increase from last year where that number was 50%. So we have 11% more saying that they're gonna stay closer to home and they're gonna drive to their destination rather than travel internationally. Uh, we also took a look at women and travel, women over 50. And one of the things that we found there is 49% listed travel as their top priority. And Christina, no other category even came close here. I think home improvement came in second at 17% as far as their priority. So. A lot want to travel. 57% say uh, they will take at least one leisure trip, and then 65% are planning domestic travel. So they are interesting trends. What we learned is people want to stay closer to home. They do want to get out there, 
but they're looking at their bottom line when it comes to travel. Okay, but gas prices aren't keeping people down. That's good news. <laughs> that's right. Some people are talking about driving to their destinations. For women, that's interesting that most are planning domestic travel. What are you going to share with us? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on at the national parks, which are amazing places, and they're all over this country. Oh, yeah. But reservations are filling up, and finding places to stay can be really, really difficult. Deals on airfares, deals on campsites, deals on hotels. So it's really time to start looking around real closely. And I'm hoping that Peter Greenberg can offer us some tips tonight <laughs> on how to secure these sites, these hotels, these trips, uh, in a way that will get you where you want to go that others may not know because the tips from Peter are going to be really important. Um, but I want to share some information about the U.S. Park uh, Passes. So if you're over 62 years old, you can purchase what they call the America Beautiful Senior Pass. Uh, and that's an annual uh, lifetime passes, also provide access to more than 2,000 recreation sites managed by six federal agencies, including like the National Park Service or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, just to name a couple. So these passes are incredible. And it, people for people 62 and over, um, it allows them in all these parks all across the country for that one fee that you pay for the pass. The passes cover entrance, uh, standard recreation fees, and some discounts too while you're in the park. So they're really, really a good deal. And there's another pass available to veterans, and we've got a short video we want to show oh, about nice. that as well. How do we thank you? How do we even begin to thank you for all that you have sacrificed to defend the country we love in the place we call home. You have chosen to put the nation before yourself. You inspire us. Now let us inspire you. Your national parks are places of recreation, connection, healing, and remembrance. Thank you for your service. I love that promotional video that we just saw. I think it's That's really, great. really good. Um, one of the great perks, too, is that if you get one of these passes, your companion, who would be in the car with you, gets into the parks for free as well. So if you're traveling with someone that might not be uh, 62 years old, they're going to get in well. They're going to get in for free as well. Another thing is, is that we've heard about places like Yosemite and Grand Canyon and all these, but there are thousands of parks all across the country. So we encourage people to do some research and find some of the smaller, more out-of-the-way parks, which may be less crowded and easier to book. What was the first national park? I bet you know. The first national the park. The first yeah. national yeah. park, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. Maybe Yosemite? Close, Yellowstone. 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 Yellowstone, that's right. And you know what? We want to hear from you. What is your national park trivia tonight? There's so many things that our audience can chime in on yeah. tonight. We want to get this discussion going. What would you like to hear about from our audience tonight? You know, we're going to talk a little bit later in the show about some hidden gems, but I do want to hear some hidden gems from our audience because they always have such great tips and advice on where to go. But I know that they are thinking of some travel destinations that we haven't even thought of right now. And so I would love to hear from our audience. Call that number, share that hidden gem with us because we want to learn. We always learn on this show from Absolutely. our audience. So. And what's on your bucket list? Let us know. We want to find out tonight what are some of your state's can't-miss vacation gems. You can share your top travel tips with us. What kind of scenery will travel travelers coming to your part of the state get a chance to see when they look out of their windows? And so it's one of those things you don't always want to share your secret spots. But the economy could use a boost right now. So you're going to be helping tourism, at least bringing dollars into some of these rural locations that could certainly use it as well. We want to hear from you tonight. Join the conversation. We're going to have a good time with you. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. And like we talked about, Peter Greenberg, travel expert, is going to be joining our conversation. He is a very well-known journalist he works for CBS News, and he's going to spend some time with us right here on this panel with you right after this quick break. Stay with us. More Rural America Live with AARP.
right after this. For more than a century, Asheville, North Carolina has been the destination for artists, architects, and adventurers seeking wide open spaces to find inspiration and refuge. And lately, Asheville has become the Tar Heel State's Renaissance City with a vibrant art scene and crafts of every kind. But it is the mix of tradition with innovation that sets this city apart. Beneath the mist hugging the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, the area around Asheville first emerged as a crossroads of Native American trails. At the turn of the 18th century, an outpost formed that would eventually become the Asheville of today. But even as the city has changed over hundreds of years, one constant has remained, the majesty of the Blue Ridge Mountains. When you think of Lake Tahoe, and so many people just call it Tahoe, a number of things come to mind. World-class skiing, gaming in the casinos on the South Shore, and of course, the lake itself. But here in North Lake Tahoe, you get all of those things, plus as many outdoor activities as you can possibly think of. There are so many things to see and do, not to mention just the history of this place and a few different ways to see it. So let me show you some of my hidden gems of North Lake Tahoe. If you're coming to Lake Tahoe, trust me, you want to be in Lake Tahoe. And by the way, that's 72 miles of shoreline, coves and beaches. Amazing to do it. You can actually circumnavigate it in about five days. But for me, I come here to Emerald Bay. Why? It's the only place in Lake Tahoe that has its own island, complete with an abandoned tea house. Here's another startling fact, the depth of the water. It's as deep as the Empire State Building is high, but you can actually see stuff that's pretty amazing right under the water. Yeah, he's got a rough job. He's got a rough job. He's with us tonight. And you know what? He is an expert. The best part about having Peter Greenberg join our conversation is that he has been to all the locations, these gems that he's going to share with us. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. You just got a sneak peek at what our special guest, Peter Greenberg, is going to share with us. Now, if you're planning your summer vacation, you may be looking ahead to the fall. You want to catch up on that beautiful changing fall color around the country? Well, tonight's show will help you do that. We've got the inside track on how to prevent your travel dreams from becoming travel nightmares. So join our conversation tonight. Give us a call at 877-283-7570 and we might just be able to get you a free cooler for your travels. We're giving away hard-sided coolers to five lucky on-air callers tonight. All you have to do is call in, share a travel tip, share a bucket list location you'd like to visit, or it, maybe you have a way to save money on the road. We'd love to hear from you. 877-283-7570. Once again, joining us tonight, Greg Marshaldin, Brad Anderson from our AARP team, and now joining us as well, travel detective Peter Greenberg. Welcome to the show. We're blessed to have you with us tonight. I just came for the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, well, you have many places that you can take that Absolutely. cooler and use it. Well, talk a little bit about what it's like being the travel detective and breaking news and investigative reports from around the world based on travel. Well, most people don't realize this, but travel is the largest industry in the world. It's one out of every 10 jobs. Before the pandemic, it was one out of every five new jobs. It's singularly responsible for the GDP of 93 separate nations. If they didn't have the revenue for travel and tourism, they'd have to fold up the tent. We learned that the hard way during the pandemic, didn't we? Yeah. And yet, what happened during the pandemic? We couldn't wait to get back out and travel again. But something else happened. We came up close and personal with our own mortality during the pandemic. And people changed their buying habits. They didn't want to do material goods anymore, new cars, new clothing, new jewelry, new expensive electronic items. They wanted to buy experience. Yes. And that's why we see everybody crowding at the airport now 
because they can't wait to do that now. Absolutely. It's interesting as well. The next generation, they seem to be all about experiences. They don't want the fancy new cars. And no. so it's interesting that we have a meeting of the generations tonight. Everybody can get on the same page when it comes to the importance of travel and leisure, especially after the pandemic. So let's start with some of your top travel tips. Well, let's figure out when we start to travel, we have to make a reservation. So I ask everybody, do you make a reservation online? Most of you do. Guess what? Big mistake. You know why? Because you don't see all the inventory. Research on the internet, don't necessarily buy on the internet. Go back to the future and have a conversation with the airline, the hotel, a travel agent, someone who's gonna see a lot more on their screen than you're gonna see on yours. And we do ourselves a big disservice because I know why we do it online. We can do it at two o'clock in the morning. We can do it in our bathroom. We don't have to talk to anybody, but we need to talk to somebody because otherwise our questions don't get answered. So if you're booking an airline ticket, how many times have you seen that thing? Only two seats left. That's not true. It's only two seats left in the inventory that's allocated to that particular website, mm. right? Same thing with the seating charts. You're not seeing the whole. You're not seeing the whole seating chart. Get on the phone and talk to somebody. Now, I know what everybody's going to think. I don't want to be on hold for 22 days. I get it. So instead, do what I do. Don't call the 800 number in this country. Call the 800 number for the airline in the United Kingdom or the 800 number for the airline in Brazil. They're up. They're waiting for your call. They speak English, and they're seeing the same thing on their screen that the airline people are seeing on their screen in Chicago, Dallas, or Atlanta. You won't have to wait. You'll get your answers, and off you go. Peace of mind. Yeah. Peace of mind, because time is money, but peace right. of mind is everything. Okay. We have callers. Are, they're waiting, standing by right now, and we're going to go to them in just a moment. But before we do, I want to make sure that we bring you into this conversation. 877-283-7570. Travel safety tips. This is a big one for people, especially yeah. if they're going to be traveling by vehicle. What should we keep in mind there? Well, first of all, when people pack, do not put your address on your luggage tag. That's an, that's an advertisement to everybody that you're not home. Huh. That's number one. But then don't just put the outside bag tag on. Open your bag and get some masking tape or some duct tape with a permanent marker and put your name and only your cell phone number on the inside. Because if the outside bag gets ripped off on the tag, they don't know who it belongs to anymore. Uh -huh. So you have a little backup there. Okay, new TSA rules, speaking of which. Well, there's one that just came out the other day, which is pretty funny. They've now determined, I'm sorry to say it, I'm the first to report it here, peanut butter's a liquid. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. So, true. so that PBJ ain't going through. Oh, no. And I worry about Christmas time with the pecan pie, but that's another oh, story. <laughs> Bottom line is don't bring that through security. The good news is, though, that at least in the United Kingdom, they basically announced that by next June, that liquid rule is gone. You can bring all your lotions and potions through. They have better technology scanning machines. The TSA has them in order now, but they won't be involved until probably the end of next year. But if you're gonna go through Europe and you're going through the United Kingdom, Stock up on all your diet soda. You're okay. <laughs> what about family trips with grandchildren? Because I know we have a lot of viewers out there who love spending time with their grandchildren. Well, you know what? It's interesting. If you're going to do it in the car, travel at night. Travel at night. It changes the whole nap cycle, right? And give them plenty of things that they like to do that is not going to be messy, right? And then guess what? By changing that cycle and making the stops when you want to make the stops, you do a whole lot better, plus less traffic. All right. Well, we're just getting started with these tips, but we want to bring our viewers into the conversation tonight. We know that we have a line upstairs. Rick from South Carolina, you are first up. Thanks for joining us, sir. Go right ahead. I was just going to ask Peter. Um, I'm in my mid-70s and still working on my bucket list. <laughs> and part of that is to run Route 66. My plan is to fly to Chicago and rent a car and see if our, I can go until the money runs out or whatever. How much of the real Route 66 is still there? A lot of it is. You know, the Mother Road starts in Chicago, ends in Santa Monica, California. Huh. And uh, we did a lot of that on, on my television show on the, on the Travel Detective in, guess where, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Route 66 goes right through there. There's a wonderful Route 66 Association in Arizona. You should check them out. And they'll give you a battle plan so you can actually map it out. Now, keep in mind, it's, you know, Dwight Eisenhower said, America didn't build the interstate highway system. The interstate highway system built America. And that's what really took care of Route 66. It kind of wiped it out. But it's still there. You can still do it. 
And I'm a big fan of doing two-lane county roads and not the interstates, because that's when you see the real America. It's interesting. Before that, the trains built America as well. And, and you have some train travel tips for us. Well, I'll give you a train travel tip that Amtrak does a terrible job of promoting, but I'm going to tell you. First of all, of course, we don't have really high-speed rail in this country. We're not going to have it for, well, maybe in our lifetime. But Amtrak still has a great route system. And what they don't promote is they have special train passes. For $500, they'll give you two weeks of unlimited on-off travel on the train. Wow. Kids under the age of 12, 250. So the way I look at it is, I can basically get rid of all my, seeing all my dysfunctional relatives <laughs> in one trip, right? And if you plan it right, you're not spending a lot of time at hotels. You can sleep on the train. Those seats are much more comfortable than an airline seat. And it works. You get to hop on and hop off. Amtrak doesn't tell you about it. A travel agent will. And you saved a lot of money. Excellent. Or Peter Greenberg will right here on AARP <laughs> Live. Go. Sheila from Texas joins us now. Thanks for joining us. Sheila, go right ahead. Yes, I'm wondering if there's a national uh, park in every state and how many, if there's more, in, are in Texas. Well, believe it or not, every state but one used to have a national park and they finally got it. That state is Delaware. Huh. I got gotcha. you. Right. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. <laughs> yep, they finally got it. But you know what? You talk about national parks and you were reporting on all the park passes. Yep. The real key secret for this summer, it's state parks. It's the state parks that are not going to be overcrowded, that won't require reservations. They still have campgrounds. And in many cases, like in Yosemite, there are state parks within five miles of it. You're going to have the same great experience. Mm. So check the state parks out as well. Absolutely. You know, I, I would also recommend um, state parks are great, especially in Iowa. County parks, too. So yes. we have a great county yes. park system. Uh, and then there are also some terrific municipal parks. So municipal, county, state. Uh, we got some gems across the country. You know, we were talking before about Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we did Route 66. We discovered in Tulsa, that city has 66 parks. Wow. Who knew? Now you know. Yeah. Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. No, Tulsa. <laughs> Tulsa. 877-283-7570. That leaves a line open for you tonight. We're going to go back to the phones in just a moment. But talk Talk to us tonight. Let us know, what are your great tips for traveling? Maybe you have a tip for traveling with a pet. After all, as you know, that can be challenging if you're not prepared. Let us know what works for you. How do you save money on a road trip? Raymond from Ohio joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Raymond. Go right ahead. Raymond, can you hear me? Yes. Thanks for joining us. Go right ahead with your tip or question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if uh, you're not planning a trip to Branson, Missouri, and is, is there is there state parks or federal parks there in Missouri? Tons, tons. I mean, take a look at where Branson's located. You're, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful territory there. Plus, you get to see Tony Orlando. What could be worse? <laughs> <laughs> just, kidding, just kidding. Just right. kidding. No, but the, po the point is there are great state parks there and, uh, and, pa and places to stay, too. I mean, you don't have to stay right in Branson. That's the beautiful thing. Use Branson as your hub and then branch out to the state parks. But what a fun place to visit, Branson. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a little Las Vegas. <laughs> You're in the, right in the yeah. middle of rural America if you've never been it there. It is. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. Bonnie joins us from Ohio, and she is a winner tonight. Congratulations to you, Bonnie. What, she won my cooler? She, she, we still got one. four yeah. left. We That's still it, got I'm four done. left. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Bonnie. Go right ahead. Yes. My husband and I traveled quite a bit. And I didn't want to be in the camper cooking all the time. And my cousins from Canada said, how can you put on a meal so fast? Before I start out, I cooked up about 10 pounds of hamburger and rinsed it after it was all fried nice and froze it in a bag. And I could reach in there with a cup and get uh, hamburger and make tacos or chili or hamburger gravy and everybody was happy and I wasn't kept. You know what? I'm traveling with Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now she's got a cooler too. too. She's got a cooler to stick that hamburger That's, I in. love it. I love it. You know, <laughs> I'll give you my tip on the road. When I ever get to a city, including where we are right now, I never just go to the hotel. 
I always stop at the local grocery store and pick out what I want because I don't want to be beaten up by the mini bar in the hotel, right? I pick out what I want. I ask the hotel to take the mini bar out. They have refrigerators, little small refrigerators, because if you look at that $9 stickers bar long enough, you're going to eat it and you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> you're going to hate yourself. So Bonnie's doing the same thing. She's just more efficient about it. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for that, Bonnie. That's a very smart tip as well, because you don't want to get stuck. You want to have a vacation. You want to get out there right. and enjoy the outdoors, not get stuck in the kitchen. That leaves a line open for you tonight, 877-283-7570. Maybe you have a hidden gem in your state or your rural location that you'd like to share with us. I think you have one to share with us, Greg, tonight. I have a hidden gem? I think you might have a hidden gem. I have a couple of hidden gems mm. from my little state up in the northeast corner. <laughs> Um, and I think we've got some uh, we've got some video to show them too. I, I've sort of picked three places uh, in my state where um, people ought to go check out. And the first is that there you'll see a lovely picture of the Hill Farmstead Brewery. What's interesting about this brewery for you beer drinkers out there is it has the number one rated beer in the world. Huh. Consistently. And, By you? And yeah. no, uh, people were all over the world, Peter. <laughs> okay. And five of the top ten. So you can go enjoy uh, one of their American Pale Ales, the Edward, and sit out in that beautiful location, particularly in the fall. This is Dog Mountain. Mm. Uh, Stephen Hunick is a, is a very famous uh, artist, and he bought 150 acres. I in, know this place. In it's the it's north, Dog Lover Heaven. It is Dog Lover Heaven. You don't have to put those dogs on a leash. There are ponds and trails to walk on. It is an absolutely spectacular place to bring your dog and your family for a day trip. And then finally, the Shelburne Museum, which is uh, also in Vermont, is says the largest uh, installation of American folk art of any museum in the world. And another reason why it's terrific for families and kids is it has indoor stuff, but it also has acres and acres of outdoor stuff. As you can see right there, there's a steamship, uh, which is now uh, sitting up on the grass. And that steamship used to travel from Canada all the way down Lake Champlain. And it is an absolutely wonderful place to bring the family for a day. See, I just need to know how they got the ship there. That's a big secret. Okay, just one big secret. I've never wanted to go to Vermont so much in my life. Are you serious? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Come visit. What a wonderful state. What about Iowa? What does oh, Iowa have to I thought you never asked, <laughs> Christina. Thank you. So my hidden gem is Mason City, Iowa. So, Peter, I don't know if you've been to Mason City, but I would recommend 24 hours in Mason City. And what you do is you stay at the only Frank Lloyd Wright hotel left in the world. It's a Frank Lloyd Wright Hotel. It's right there in Mason City. All the rooms are totally unique, and it was built in 1919, and they refurbished it to look like it was built in 1919. It was amazing. Uh, then what I would recommend, Christina, is head 20 miles east to the All Iowa Lawn Tennis Club. This is a lawn tennis club that is modeled after Wimbledon that was built in the middle of a cornfield by a farmer. Anyone if you can play. build it, they will come. We, I don't know what it is with sports in cornfields in <laughs> Iowa, but it, it's a thing. And anyone can play. You sign up online. Farmer Mark Kuhn built it, and it is just spectacular. And so I would recommend going there. Then head back to Mason City and check out Music Man Square because that's where Meredith Wilson was born and raised and wrote The Music Man. Uh, and you've got a great trip. And do it all in 24 hours, and you'll have the time of your life. Mason City, Iowa. Okay. And you get to see all that beautiful agriculture along the way. Beautiful agriculture. I love it. As yes. our farmers feed the world, that's one of the best parts of, of being on a road trip is seeing all of the food production. Okay, we're going to go to Louisiana, another great state to visit. Mary Lou joins us now. Thanks for joining us, Mary Lou. Go right ahead. Hello. Hello. How are y'all? Good. I'm good. I don't have a uh, hint or whatever. I was just, like I was telling my operator, we farmed all of our lives. My husband passed away now, so we don't do that. But we was always having to bale hay or look after the cows. Our vacation, when our two kids were growing up, was we got to quit in the hay field one day early when there was a rodeo about 20 miles from us. We all went to the rodeo, and we went out to eat. That was my kids' vacation for very, very, very many summers. And they love to tell people now, we don't ever get to go on a vacation. We just went to the rodeo. But you can have fun no matter where you're at. You're right. By the way, what's the rodeo capital of, of America? Wyoming. Cody, Wyoming, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. And so you Absolutely. knew that. See, yeah, you we, got that we, one right. We, yeah, we, we went covered. to Yellowstone. We went to Yellowstone, which we talked about. And the highlight of the trip was going to the rodeo. It was right outside of Yellowstone. 
and it was the first rodeo that my kids saw, and they absolutely loved it. So Mary Lou's totally right. I mean, you can have a great vacation at a rodeo. Sure. We certainly did. Absolutely. Absolutely. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. Maybe you have a tip. Maybe you can let us know how you actually save a little bit of money when you travel. We'd also love to hear from you about some of the more unpleasant things that happen when we mm. travel. Maybe on an airline, for example. No one's had unpleasant Maybe experiences a delay. on an airline. Yeah. Maybe a cancellation. Is there <laughs> well, anything you, you can do about it? Well, first of all, you have to understand that if the airlines were being honest about their branding message, it would be, we're not happy until you're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can go from there. Uh, look, airplanes are all full right now. Uh, you can't find a seat. Everybody's crammed in. They're putting more seats in with less room. Uh, but the key that you have to do now is to beat them at their own game. So, for example, we go back to when you book online. You don't book online because you'll see, oh, you're going to connect a flight. It's only a 30-minute connect time. That's absurd. That's suicidal. You'll never make it. So everybody needs to give themselves at least two and a half hours between flights. Book it that way. Because if you miss that first flight or it's late, the second flight's gone. And if they want to put you on a third flight, they can't because it's already full. So that's the first thing you want to do. Minimum of two and a half hour connect time. You know, in the Charlotte airport, they have those cute little rocking chairs. You yeah. know what the message they're sending you? You're going to be here a while. <laughs> so make sure you understand the real time differences that you need to do. That's one. Now, number two, we all talk about travel insurance. It's one of the most misleading things we can do. For those of you who book online, guess what? You can't finish the transaction unless you either opt in or opt out of the insurance, and you're not, you don't know what you're covered for, and worse, you don't know what you're not covered for. Don't buy the insurance online, opt out of it, then call a travel agent, someone who can actually walk you through the hieroglyphics of what that policy language says, and then you'll know what you're covered for or what you're not covered for. But you are not obligated to no, you're not. make that clear. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then I got one more for you, and that is friends do not let friends fly basic economy. <laughs> that, that's the lowest fare you're going to see. The only people who should be flying basic economy are people in the witness relocation program <laughs> or fugitives from justice. Because you have no rights, you have no choices, you have no options. And for $30 more, that's the differential in most cases, you actually get a seat choice, a bag, and you can go ahead. But basic economy, don't go for it. Okay, very smart. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. We want to hear from you. Maybe you've had a rough encounter on an airplane. Share that story with us tonight. I'd like to know, where are you headed this summer? Where are you headed this spring? Give us a call and let us know. We just want to find out, get a little barometer check on where you're headed. 877-283-7570. Norman joins us now. Thanks for joining the conversation. Norman, go right ahead. Good evening. I want to say what a pleasure talking to you. And um, I'm uh, in Connecticut, and I go up to uh, the upper state New York um, during the summer and springtime and fall. And I want to say it's such a delight to um, travel up there because there's still a lot of rural, a lot of farming up there. I go up to it at Fenneman, um House um, up there in uh, Cooperstown. Cooperstown is uh, about Noah's Land and um, has one uh, blinking light in town for the baseball hall of fame. It has a great opera house and also like a look to uh, Saratoga Springs and uh, also go up to Lake Georgia and it is fantastic up that way. And I want to say it's such a pleasure talking to you guys. You know, he talks. He's right about Cooperstown. You got the lake. You do have the baseball hall of fame. But they do have all the stores that sell the baseball memorabilia there. And the funniest sign I've ever seen in a store, which applied to my childhood, was a sign in the window that said, we have all the baseball cards your mother threw out. Oh. Uh, I want to follow up on that one, too. I'm, I'm born and raised in Lake Placid, New York, right in the center of the Adirondack Mountains. You know, you talk to people from, you know, New York City, and, you know, many people don't go to this incredible park, which is, takes up about, you know, a third of northern New York. Um, and it is an absolutely spectacular place to visit year-round, both winter and summer. It's great to hear a caller yeah. come in and promote New York. That part of New York, which a lot of people don't think, um, has a lot of great things to do. It really does. Absolutely. A lot of farming. And a lot of farming, a lot of family farming up Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that call. We appreciate it. That leaves a line open for you, 877-283-7570. Where are you headed? Where will your road trip take you? Give us a call and let us know. And you could be a winner tonight. Our next caller certainly is. 
We have Monty from Nebraska joining the conversation. Thanks for joining us, Monty. What, he, right he won my cooler, too? Yep. Yeah. Whoa. We're, we're getting low <laughs> on coolers. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to welcome you all to Nebraska. Uh, come to Scotts Bluff National Monument. Uh, it's uh, right in the heart of the Oregon Trail and the, the Western Movement. And we are close to the Black Hills of South Dakota with Mount Rushmore. Um, we have several state parks, then 100 miles of Scotts Bluff and Right now, I'm sitting here looking out at the beautiful sunset, but I want to welcome y'all um, back to Mary Lou. I am still the one that is in the hayfield and takes my kids to Cheyenne <laughs> Frontier Days for a vacation. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny about Nebraska. Every state has, has tourism slogans. They're promoting their state. We're wonderful. We're beautiful. We're this. The slogan for Nebraska is the most creative I've ever heard. Ready? Nebraska, it's not for everybody. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> that wants you, that makes you want to go. That's and you know what? Slogan, you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. True. Okay, we're going to pause for a quick break. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. I want to find out what the hotel tips that you have for us are. So stay tuned. We're okay. going to get those on the other side of this break. Ron from Nebraska, you are going to be our next caller as well. And we still have time for your call. 877-283-7570. We want to hear from you. And you might be a winner tonight. We'll be right back with more Rural America Live with AARP right after this. Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We still have two coolers to give away, so let's go straight to the phone. So you're saying I got a chance? <laughs> <laughs> you still have a slim okay, chance. Okay, a okay. slim chance. We'll We'll see how good these tips okay, are. Okay. Ron from Nebraska joins us. Thanks for joining us, Ron. Thanks for your patience. Go right ahead. Great. Uh, my wife has been bugging the heck out of me to take her to see the Redwoods in California. And uh, what we were wanting is, is uh, what's the best way to get there? Uh, years ago, we had taken an Amtrak to Reno, and that was a fun trip. Uh, what is there around, also around the... Uh, the uh, redwoods out there that uh, would be worth uh, while taking in while we're out there. Well, you can still take the train. Uh, Amtrak still runs that service. But what you really want to do, especially if you're thinking about going in the summer, is that when you're thinking of going? Yes? Ron, you with me? You may have, been, may have dropped off. I you think we lost off. him, yeah. Well, if Ron's listening, don't go on the weekends. That's suicidal. Go midweek, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, and get there. I'm a big fan of what we call Magic Hour. Get there at 5 in the morning, stay for the sunrise, and as you're leaving, all the tour buses are coming in, and you've had your moment. <laughs> I'm a big fan of getting there at 5 in the morning. You should also check out the giant sequoias that you will only find on the western-facing slopes of California, Sierra, and Nevada. Absolutely. Which are amazing as well. Thank you so much for that call. You're inspiring all of us out there. Please keep these calls coming. The number is 877-283-7570. Tom joins us from Iowa. Like Thanks for joining us, Tom. Fine, yeah. Go well, right ahead, Tom, and congratulations, congratulations, sir. You're a winner. Well, thank you. I wanted to promote the town of Medora, North Dakota. Medora, North Dakota oh. is at the entrance to the Teddy Roosevelt National Park. The town itself has many tourist attractions with a cowboy museum, other cowboy-type theme. There's also an outdoor musical pageant that uh, gives the history of Teddy Roosevelt when he first went to North Dakota to find himself after his wife and his uh, mother had passed away. So it's rich in history, lots of cowboy experience, and it's right on Interstate 94 on your way out west. North Dakota does not get enough love. It's a state that most people have never been to. And in fact, if you talk to most presidents and, mes and presidential candidates when they campaign, they don't even go. They don't even go. Obama made a pledge when, in his second term he was going to get to all 50 states. And, of course, the last state was <laughs> North Dakota. And By the way, it was the last state that I got to. Really? I could been in all 50, but North Dakota was number 50, and it was cool. It was, you know why? Because you own it. You get there, and there's nobody bothering you. You actually get to see it the way it was meant to be seen. Yeah, that may not be the case forever. Might That's be true. time to visit North Dakota. That leaves a line open for you tonight, 877-283-7570. Bill from North Carolina is up next. Thanks for joining us, Bill. And congratulations, I'm just hearing you, sir, 
are a winner. Congratulations to you. I'm not getting a cooler. I'm one left, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> one left. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This is Bill. Hey, Bill, we're glad you're with us. Do you have a tip or a question for us? Well, I just wanted to let you folks know that a friend of mine and me are traveling to Alaska on an opening trip. Uh, we don't have a schedule. We, we're just going to leave here on June the 11th and drive from North Carolina to Alaska and tour Alaska. And then just when we get tired, uh, we're just going to turn around and come back home. And just <laughs> you know what? That sounds like Forrest <laughs> Gump. That's Forrest Gump. That's I ran across the country. Right I got tired. I went home. You know what? <laughs> if you're going to do the Alaska Highway, do it. But keep in mind, you won't be alone. That's their high season, obviously, June, July, and August. If you go earlier in June, you, you'll have a better deal of finding a place to stay and also a place to get off the beaten path and see stuff with, without the crowds. Because Alaska is a very short season. June, July, August, a little bit of September, that's it. So if you're going to drive it, that's when you do it. I love it, though. I love hearing the adventure, you know? I love that. There's still some adventure out there. Have you ever done anything like that? I do it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do it all the time on all of our shows. We're out there actually in the wild doing some fun stuff doing it safely, doing it accessibly, but enjoying it with one other thing that I think everybody will share in common here. We have conversations. Love it. Travel is nothing without great storytelling, common ground, and memories that you get to share. And it's not going to be done on the internet. It's not going to be done just by reading a book. It's about, if you're going to drive your car in Alaska, stop and talk to everybody you meet, because they can't wait to talk to you. That's where memories are made, and that's why you come back. Spending time with the locals. Absolutely. Spending time with the locals. Bibby from Illinois joins us now. Thanks for joining us. Bibby, go right ahead. Yes, my name is Bibby, and the best vacation I've ever taken my kids and grandkids is on is to a dude ranch in southern Colorado. And I have a daughter-in-law who doesn't ride horses, but she said that's the best vacation she's ever had. Hmm. Well, so you know, don't my, eliminate my dude ranches. I think dude ranches are great. I'm the city slicker here. Horses take one look at me <laughs> and they go back to the barn at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> but you know what? I'm getting better at it now. I'm, I'm becoming a horse whisperer. But yes, it's a great experience, especially because it's participatory. You actually get out and do, you're not watching other people do it, you're doing it at 90 miles an hour, screaming at the horse. <laughs> but it's okay. I wonder. There were quite a few deals for cruising after the pandemic, during the pandemic. We're still kind of in it. Should be over soon, hopefully next month. But can you tell me, is that still the, uh, the case? And uh, what's the best way to get the best deal possible for a cruise? Well, you know, you're right. During the pandemic, of course, all cruising was stopped. It was stopped for 18 months. They had to perform to a lot of CDC requirements, which they've all done. During that period of time, they retired a lot of ships earlier than their useful lifespan. They were all taken to the scrapyards, but the shipyards were busy. Another 35 new ships have been built. That means they have cabins that need to be filled and, and space that has to be sold. And believe it or not, up until about a week ago, so we're still seeing it, we're seeing seven-night cruises in some parts of the country, especially on the East Coast, being sold for $449. Wow. You can't wake up in Kansas for $449 <laughs> for a week, right? But again, you don't just buy the fare for the ship. You get on the phone with the travel agent or the cruise line and negotiate everything else, meaning shore excursions, onboard expenses, meals, and drinks packages, Wi-Fi, everything you'd want to do at a hotel, you do it on the cruise, and that way you get the best value. It's not just the rate for the cabin, it's all those other expenses you're not going to be able to do online, have to have a conversation. Excellent, excellent guidance. 877-283-7570 is the number to call and join our conversation. Angela joins us now from Texas. Thanks for joining us, Angela. Go right ahead. Thank you. I want to agree with the uh, checking with locals about places to see. When we were in Blaine, Washington, we learned about a little harbor tour on a, a restored 40s boat that was just a gem. And I was so excited. We saw fields and sea lions, and it was absolutely a treat. And also to save money, uh, we would have breakfast in little parks um, in the mornings when we traveled with our family and we always did car trips so that our kids could take advantage of seeing the USA and we have covered 
all 50 states, all and right. it has been a joy doing that traveling and learning about little gems hidden along the way. You know how I learned about hidden gems? I don't talk to general managers at hotels. I don't talk to concierges. I talk to the maids. I talk to the bellhops, and I ask them to take me to where they live in their communities. And those are places you never see. And the next thing you know, you're hanging out in their restaurants and their stores, and those are lifelong friendships because you actually opened your mouth and asked somebody to tell you about themselves. I love that. That leaves a line open for you, 877-283-7570. And maybe you want to answer this question that I'm about to pose to Peter, and the same to both of you gentlemen. Sure. If you could wake up anywhere in this country tomorrow, anywhere, what would that destination be? Oh, well, yeah, you have a hot seat. Brad. Um, hey, you did really cooler. Come on. Yeah. Brad. Well, there is one cooler left. You yeah. know, um, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but I have never been to the Grand Canyon. And a friend of mine just showed me photos. He was fly fishing on the Grand Canyon and caught some amazing trout. And uh, it's just almost unbelievable, like, to look at those photos. So if I could wake up tomorrow, I love Nashville. You know that. You know I love Nashville. <laughs> I'd love to be at the Grand Canyon. That's, That's on the bucket excellent. list. I think it's one of those places that really, truly, everybody makes a big deal about it for good reason. I've been fortunate to go to a, a lot of places in this country, but one that I haven't been is the Rio Grande Valley. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a place that I would like to get to at some point. Um, sort of that real southern part of Texas, which seems very open, wild, sort of still very adventurous. Um, and um, I like the whole sort of river land combo piece. So that's a place that I really want to get to. Excellent. Where the Mustangs roam. Now like you talk it. about waking up. I talk about sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> because my metric for my, my great places to dream about going to is where I sleep the best. Because where you sleep the best is where you think the best. It's where you create the best. It's where you love the best. It's where you aspire to return. So for me, we talked about national parks before. I'll talk about a national seashore. And that's a place where I love to go back. I've been there since I'm six months old. It's Fire Island, a national seashore in New York. It's a 32-mile long island, never gets more than a third of a mile wide. When you're sleeping on the bay, you hear the ocean. That's all I need. That's to me. <laughs> so it's not about waking up. It's the ability every once in a while to really sleep well. A, a great pointer is there as well about where you sleep. Absolutely. And how important that is. Richard from Illinois. Thanks for joining us, Richard. Go right ahead. Hello, Rich Reynolds. Hey, thanks for joining us, yes. Rich. Yes, we uh, we've been we're going to do a, a trip this summer from uh, New Orleans to Minnesota and Viking, and we've been doing this now. Uh, this is our third time we did with Viking. We were in Europe in Viking, and we liked it. Uh, we liked what they took. So uh, anyway, uh, what you know what, what he's talking about is happening big time in this country for the first time in a long time. I'm actually going to get on a Viking ship in June in Milwaukee and take it all the way to Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's the Great Lakes, and it's unbelievable. The river cruises and the lake cruises in this country, we've seen the river cruises for years. Now we're seeing the Great Lakes cruises. The one body of water I really want to go on, what's the largest body of water in North America? What is it? Lake Superior. Superior. Wrong. No. I, I, oh, you're going to... I said Superior. No? I said it, yeah, no. You can't copy him. He was already wrong. Um, <laughs> Is it going to be something like Mississippi River or something no. that we're not thinking? When okay. you look at a map, you'll be blown away. Remember, I said North America. It's Hudson Bay in wow. Canada. It is so huge, and oh. nobody knows about it. That's my fantasy. I really want to go do that. By boat, of course. Yeah. Well, you know you are reaching a Canadian audience tonight. This isn't just rural America Hudson we're Bay, talking baby. to. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. We love our Canadian viewers as well. Okay, I, I have to ask you about hotel tips. Okay. We travel a lot here for work. <laughs> All right. Well, when you check into a hotel, it's not just getting your key and giving them your credit card. There are a couple of questions you have to ask before you ever get your key, and you'll thank me. Okay, here we go. Question number one, how close is my room to the construction? Right, because every hotel is in one form or another of either renovation or restoration. And if you don't ask that question, they will give you the keys to the jackhammer suite. <laughs> that is not a good idea. The second thing you want to do is ask for a, a room on a floor between the second and the seventh floor. Nobody should ever get a room on the first floor because that's crime and safety, easy to break in. But the reason why you want to pick a hotel room between the second and the seventh floor 
is there's not a fire department in the world that can effectively fight a fire above the seventh floor. So if you want a great room with a view on the 44th floor, you will have a great room, a, a great view of the fire department being unable to reach you. Wow. Okay, so two to seven. And then last but not least, do you all like good water pressure in your bathroom? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. That's a good, good. Okay, so how do you get it? Every hotel is the same problem. They can't maintain sufficiently standard water pressure in every floor. So what do they do? On different floors, they put in booster pumps. So you're going to ask a question of the front desk clerk who's going to look at you like deer in the headlights for three minutes, then they're going to get it. Say, before you give me the room key, can you tell me what floors you have the booster pumps on? And if they say they want on three and five or whatever, say, I'll take a room on that floor. You get that room, you go into your bathroom, you turn on the faucet, it's a fire hose. <laughs> it's the best. So now you know, right? Below the seventh floor, ask if it's close to the construction and ask about the booster pumps. How do you feel about asking, though? Because it's, it can be difficult when you're going to check in. There's people behind you, and you're worried about them listening. Where do you get Oh, they, they should know about the booster pumps, too. <laughs> you're absolutely right about that. But do you ever have to muster up the courage? Listen, we have a problem in this country. We have lost the art of the conversation. Talk to people. Learn. Find common ground. Because if you don't ask, you're a victim waiting to happen. And look at all the different points of abuse that are awaiting you every time you travel. From the moment you make that reservation online to the time you come back with your airport and, the, and hoping that the bags are on the same flight that you were not, you need to ask the questions. And that's what we do on our show, that's what we do on our radio show, that's what we're doing here tonight. It's about the conversation. I love it. I love it. You're encouraging all of us. And thank you for giving us a moment to kind of dream as well tonight. It was a nice opportunity to think about where we'd like to be waking up. <laughs> or going to sleep. Or going to sleep. You, you haven't given us your Oh, that's right. Oh, that's it's right. Easy. Spot. Key West. Oh. You wake up, good times to be had. <laughs> so that is a guarantee. That would be my place for sure. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Before we say good night, you have one final tip to share with us. I do. And it goes back to that conversation. And it's for everybody out there watching. Never, never, never take a no from somebody who's not empowered to give you a yes in the first place. It's very simple, because if you actually ask most of the people in the travel industry a question, whatever the question is, the first person you meet, he's only empowered or she's only empowered to tell you no. Get to the person who can give you a yes. Now, if they say no, it's no. But if they say yes, you just had a much better experience. May I please speak to your supervisor? Well, yes, but you know what? Do it just like that. Just yes. like you flirted with me. Yeah, you know, just kind of, can I please speak to your supervisor? You know what I mean? You don't want to be too aggressive. No, this is not a battle. No. No, because by the time you get to that first person, they've been beaten up so many times by their own company. Right. Put yourself in their shoes. They have a hard job. Talk about them. Find that common ground and then ask that question. Excellent. And make their day in the process Absolutely. as well. Okay, final thoughts, gentlemen? Well, what I'm hearing is advocate for yourself. Yeah. And, and that is a really empowering thing to do. And so, um, you know, I would encourage everyone to listen. Peter, you told me, call the hotels, get the discounts, call them directly, ask for the manager. And guess what? I'm going to be doing that. Right. And I've heard, certainly directly from Peter tonight, get out there and go have fun and go see things and go do things. And as Peter said, there's lots of small stuff all around, you know, that may be a mile or two or 25 miles from where you are. Uh, and so go see those places. It doesn't always have to be the Empire State Building. There are lots of really good places to see in America. And one more thing very quickly. Everybody here has had the same exact experience, I guarantee you. The best experiences you've ever had when you traveled was when the plans didn't work. Right. And you turned left instead of turning right, and it changed your life. <laughs> the destination. It's not about the destination. That's right. It's about the journey. And thank you for taking this journey with us. We're going to be back here next time, third Thursday of next month, talking about decluttering your house. We'll see you then.